Individualist anarchism refers to several traditions of thought within the anarchist movement that emphasize the individual and his will over external determinants such as groups, society, traditions and ideological systems. Individualist anarchism is not a single philosophy, but it refers to a group of individualistic philosophies that sometimes are in conflict. Benjamin Tucker, a famous 19th-century individualist anarchist, held that, "...if the individual has the right to govern himself, all external government is tyranny." <inaudible> Overview Among the early influences on individualist anarchism were William Godwin, Josiah Warren, Sovereignty of the Individual, Max Stirner, Egoism, Lysander Spooner, Natural Law, Pierre Joseph Proudhon, Mutualism, Henry David Thoreau, Transcendentalism, Herbert Spencer, Law of Equal Liberty. And Anselm Belligarig, individualist anarchism of different kinds have a few things in common. These are the following The concentration on the individual and their will in preference to any construction such as morality, ideology, social custom, religion, metaphysics, ideas or the will of others. The rejection of or reservations about the idea of revolution, seeing it as a time of mass uprising which could bring about new hierarchies. Instead, they favor more evolutionary methods of bringing about anarchy through alternative experiences and experiments and education which could be brought about today. This is also because it is not seen as desirable for individuals to wait for revolution to start experiencing alternative experiences outside what is offered in the current social system. The view that relationships with other persons or things can be in one's own interest only and can be as transitory and without compromises as desired since in individualist anarchism sacrifice is usually rejected. In this way, Max Stirner recommended associations of egoists. Individual experience and exploration therefore is emphasized. The egoist form of individualist anarchism, derived from the philosophy of Max Stirner, supports the individual doing exactly what he pleases taking no notice of God, state, or moral rules. To Stirner, rights were spooks in the mind, and he held that society does not exist but the individuals are its reality. He supported property by force of might rather than moral right. Stirner advocated self-assertion and foresaw associations of egoists drawn together by respect for each other's ruthlessness. For American anarchist historian Eunice Manette Schuster, American individualist anarchism stresses the isolation of the individual, his right to his own tools, his mind, his body, and to the products of his labor. To the artist who embraces this philosophy it is aesthetic anarchism, to the reformer, ethical anarchism, to the independent mechanic, economic anarchism. The former is concerned with philosophy, the latter with practical demonstration. The economic anarchist is concerned with constructing a society on the basis of anarchism. Economically he sees no harm whatever in the private possession of what the individual produces by his own labor, but only so much and no more. 
The aesthetic and ethical type found expression in the transcendentalism, humanitarianism, and romanticism of the first part of the 19th century, the economic type in the pioneer life of the West during the same period, but more favorably after the Civil War. It is for this reason that it has been suggested that in order to understand American individualist anarchism one must take into account the social context of their ideas, namely the transformation of America from a pre-capitalist to a capitalist society. The non-capitalist nature of the early U.S. can be seen from the early dominance of self-employment artisan and peasant production. At the beginning of the 19th century, around 80% of the working male population were self-employed. The great majority of Americans during this time were farmers working their own land, primarily for their own needs. And so, I individualist anarchism is clearly a form of artisanal socialism. While communist anarchism and anarcho-syndicalism are forms of industrial or proletarian socialism. Contemporary individualist anarchist Kevin Carson characterizes American individualist anarchism saying that, "...un like the rest of the socialist movement, the individualist anarchists believed that the natural wage of labor in a free market was its product, and that economic exploitation could only take place when capitalists and landlords harnessed the power of the state in their interests." Thus, individualist anarchism was an alternative both to the increasing statism of the mainstream socialist movement, and to a classical liberal movement that was moving toward a mere apologetic for the power of big business. In European individualist anarchism, a different social context helped the rise of European individualist illegalism and as such, t he illegalists were proletarians who had nothing to sell but their labor power, and nothing to discard but their dignity, if they disdained waged work, it was because of its compulsive nature. If they turned to illegality it was due to the fact that honest toil only benefited the employers and often entailed a complete loss of dignity, while any complaints resulted in the sack, to avoid starvation through lack of work it was necessary to beg or steal, and to avoid conscription into the army many of them had to go on the run. A European tendency of individualist anarchism advocated violent individual acts of individual reclamation, propaganda by the deed and criticism of organization. Such individualist anarchist tendencies include French illegalism and Italian anti-organizational insurrectionarism. Bookchin reports that at the end of the 19th century and the beginning of the 20th, it was in times of severe social repression and deadening social quiescence that individualist anarchists came to the foreground of libertarian activity, and then primarily as terrorists. In France, Spain, and the United States, individualistic anarchists committed acts of terrorism that gave anarchism its reputation as a violently sinister conspiracy. Another important tendency within individualist anarchist currents emphasizes individual subjective exploration and defiance of social conventions. Individualist anarchist philosophy attracted, amongst artists, intellectuals and the well-read, urban middle classes in general. As such, Murray Bookchin describes a lot of individualist anarchism as people who, 
expressed their opposition in uniquely personal forms, especially in fiery tracts, outrageous behavior and aberrant lifestyles in the cultural ghettos of fin de siècle New York, Paris and London. As a credo, individualist anarchism remained largely a bohemian lifestyle, most conspicuous in its demands for sexual freedom, free love, and enamored of innovations in art, behavior, and clothing. In this way, free love currents and other radical lifestyles such as naturism had popularity among individualist anarchists. For Catalan historian Xavier Diaz, individualist anarchism, under its iconoclastic, anti-intellectual, antitheist run, which goes against all sacralized ideas or values it entailed, a philosophy of life which could be considered a reaction against the sacred gods of capitalist society. Against the idea of nation, it opposed its internationalism. Against the exaltation of authority embodied in the military institution, it opposed its anti-militarism. Against the concept of industrial civilization, it opposed its naturist vision. In regards to economic questions, there are diverse positions. There are adherents to mutualism, Proudhon, Emile Armand and early Benjamin Tucker, egoistic disrespect for ghosts, such as private property and markets, Stirner, John Henry Mackay, Lev Chernyi and later Tucker, and adherents to anarcho-communism, Albert Libertad, illegalism and Renzo Novatore. Anarchist historian George Woodcock finds a tendency in individualist anarchism of a distrust of all cooperation beyond the barest minimum for an ascetic life. On the issue of violence opinions have gone from a violentist point of view mainly exemplified by illegalism and insurrectionary anarchism to one that can be called anarcho-pacifist. In the particular case of Spanish individualist anarchist Miguel Jiménez Igualada, he went from a legalist practice in his youth towards a pacifist position later in his life. <laughs> Early influences William Godwin William Godwin can be considered an individualist anarchist and philosophical anarchist who was influenced by the ideas of the Age of Enlightenment, and developed what many consider the first expression of modern anarchist thought. According to Peter Kropotkin, Godwin, the first to formulate the political and economical conceptions of anarchism, even though he did not give that name to the ideas developed in his work. Godwin advocated extreme individualism, proposing that all cooperation in labor be eliminated. Godwin was a utilitarian who believed that all individuals are not of equal value, with some of us of more worth and importance than others depending on our utility in bringing about social good. Therefore, he does not believe in equal rights, but the person's life that should be favored that is most conducive to the general good. Godwin opposed government because it infringes on the individual's right to private judgment to determine which actions most maximize utility, but also makes a critique of all authority over the individual's judgment. This aspect of Godwin's philosophy, minus the utilitarianism, was developed into a more extreme form later by Stirner. Godwin took individualism to the radical extent of opposing individuals performing together in orchestras, writing in Political Justice that 
Everything understood by the term cooperation is in some sense an evil. The only apparent exception to this opposition to cooperation is the spontaneous association that may arise when a society is threatened by violent force. One reason he opposed cooperation is he believed it to interfere with an individual's ability to be benevolent for the greater good. Godwin opposes the idea of government, but wrote that a minimal state is a present, necessary evil, that would become increasingly irrelevant and powerless by the gradual spread of knowledge. He expressly opposed democracy, fearing oppression of the individual by the majority, though he believed it to be preferable to dictatorship. Godwin supported individual ownership of property, defining it as the empire to which every man is entitled over the produce of his own industry. However, he also advocated that individuals give to each other their surplus property on the occasion that others have a need for it, without involving trade e.g. gift economy. Thus while people have the right to private property, they should give it away as enlightened altruists. This was to be based on utilitarian principles and he said, Every man has a right to that, the exclusive possession of which being awarded to him, a greater sum of benefit or pleasure will result than could have arisen from its being otherwise appropriated. However, benevolence was not to be enforced, being a matter of free individual, private judgment. He did not advocate a community of goods or assert collective ownership as is embraced in communism, but his belief that individuals ought to share with those in need was influential on the later development of anarcho-communism. Godwin's political views were diverse and do not perfectly agree with any of the ideologies that claim his influence as writers of the Socialist Standard, organ of the Socialist Party of Great Britain, consider Godwin both an individualist and a communist. Murray Rothbard did not regard Godwin as being in the individualist camp at all, referring to him as the founder of communist anarchism. And historian Albert Weisbord considers him an individualist anarchist without reservation. Some writers see a conflict between Godwin's advocacy of private judgment and utilitarianism as he says that ethics requires that individuals give their surplus property to each other resulting in an egalitarian society, but at the same time he insists that all things be left to individual choice. As noted by Kropotkin, many of Godwin's views changed over time. William Godwin's influenced the Socialism of Robert Owen and Charles Fourier. After success of his British venture, Owen himself established a cooperative community within the United States at New Harmony, Indiana during 1825. One member of this commune was Josiah Warren (1798–1874), considered to be the first individualist anarchist. After New Harmony failed, Warren shifted his ideological loyalties from socialism to anarchism, which was no great leap, given that Owen's socialism had been predicated on Godwin's anarchism. Topic. Pierre Joseph Proudhon Pierre Joseph Proudhon was the first philosopher to label himself an anarchist. Some consider Proudhon to be an individualist anarchist while others regard him to be a social anarchist. 
Some commentators do not identify Proudhon as an individualist anarchist, due to his preference for association in large industries, rather than individual control. Nevertheless, he was influential among some of the American individualists. In the 1840s and 1850s, Charles A. Dana and William B. Green introduced Proudhon's works to the United States. Green adapted Proudhon's mutualism to American conditions and introduced it to Benjamin Tucker. Proudhon opposed government privilege that protects capitalist, banking and land interests and the accumulation or acquisition of property and any form of coercion that led to it, which he believed hampers competition and keeps wealth in the hands of the few. Proudhon favored a right of individuals to retain the product of their labor as their own property, but believed that any property beyond that which an individual produced and could possess was illegitimate. Thus he saw private property as both essential to liberty and a road to tyranny, the former when it resulted from labor and was required for labor and the latter when it resulted in exploitation profit, interest, rent and tax. He generally called the former, possession, and the latter, property. For large-scale industry, he supported workers' associations to replace wage labor and opposed the ownership of land. Proudhon maintained that those who labor should retain the entirety of what they produce and that monopolies on credit and land are the forces that prohibit such. He advocated an economic system that included private property as possession and exchange market, but without profit, which he called mutualism. It is Proudhon's philosophy that was explicitly rejected by Joseph de Jacques in the inception of anarcho-communism, with the latter asserting directly to Proudhon in a letter that it is not the product of his or her labor that the worker has a right to, but to the satisfaction of his or her needs, whatever may be their nature." An individualist rather than anarcho-communist, Proudhon said that, "...communism is the very denial of society in its foundation," and famously declared that, Property is theft, in reference to his rejection of ownership rights to land being granted to a person who is not using that land. After de Jacques and others split from Proudhon due to the latter's support of individual property and an exchange economy, the relationship between the individualists who continued in relative alignment with the philosophy of Proudhon and the anarcho-communists was characterized by various degrees of antagonism and harmony. For example, individualists like Tucker on the one hand translated and reprinted the works of collectivists like Mikhail Bakunin while on the other hand rejected the economic aspects of collectivism and communism as incompatible with anarchist ideals. Mutualism <inaudible> 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 Mutualism is an anarchist school of thought which can be traced to the writings of Pierre-Joseph Proudhon, who envisioned a society where each person might possess a means of production, either individually or collectively, with trade representing equivalent amounts of labor in the free market. Integral to the scheme was the establishment of a mutual credit bank which would lend to producers at a minimal interest rate only high enough to cover the costs of administration. Mutualism is based on a labor theory of value which holds that when labor or its product is sold, in exchange it ought to receive goods or services embodying the amount of labor necessary to produce an article of exactly similar and equal utility. 
Some mutualists believe that if the state did not intervene, as a result of increased competition in the marketplace, individuals would receive no more income than that in proportion to the amount of labor they exert. Mutualists oppose the idea of individuals receiving an income through loans, investments and rent as they believe these individuals are not laboring. Some of them argue that if state intervention ceased, these types of incomes would disappear due to increased competition in capital. Though Proudhon opposed this type of income, he expressed, I never meant to forbid or suppress, by sovereign decree, ground rent and interest on capital. I believe that all these forms of human activity should remain free and optional for all." Insofar as they ensure the workers' right to the full product of their labor, mutualists support markets and private property in the product of labor. However, they argue for conditional titles to land, whose private ownership is legitimate only so long as it remains in use or occupation, which Proudhon called possession. Proudhon's mutualism supports labor-owned cooperative firms and associations for we need not hesitate, for we have no choice. It is necessary to form an association among workers because without that, they would remain related as subordinates and superiors, and there would ensue two castes of masters and wage workers, which is repugnant to a free and democratic society." And so it becomes necessary for the workers to form themselves into democratic societies, with equal conditions for all members, on pain of a relapse into feudalism. As for capital goods, man made, non land, means of production, mutualist opinion differs on whether these should be commonly managed public assets or private property. Following Proudhon, mutualists originally considered themselves to be libertarian socialists. However, some mutualists have abandoned the labor theory of value, and prefer to avoid the term socialist. Quote, but they still retain some cultural attitudes, for the most part, that set them off from the libertarian right. Mutualists have distinguished themselves from state socialism and do not advocate social control over the means of production. Benjamin Tucker said of Proudhon that, Though opposed to socializing the ownership of capital, Proudhon aimed nevertheless to socialize its effects by making its use beneficial to all instead of a means of impoverishing the many to enrich the few. By subjecting capital to the natural law of competition, thus bringing the price of its own use down to cost. Topic: <laughs> Max Stirner. Johann Caspar Schmidt, October 25, 1806 to June 26, 1856, better known as Max Stirner, the nom de plume he adopted from a schoolyard nickname he had acquired as a child because of his high brow. In German, Stern was a German philosopher who ranks as one of the literary fathers of nihilism, existentialism, postmodernism, and anarchism, especially of individualist anarchism. Stirner's main work is The Ego and Its Own, also known as The Ego and His Own, Der Einziger und Sein Eigentum in German, which translates literally as the only one, individual, and his property. This work was first published in 1844 in Leipzig and has since appeared in numerous editions and translations.
Topic: <laughs> Egoism. Max Stirner's philosophy, sometimes called egoism, is a form of individualist anarchism. Stirner was a Hegelian philosopher whose name appears with familiar regularity in historically oriented surveys of anarchist thought as one of the earliest and best known exponents of individualist anarchism. In 1844, his The Ego and Its Own Der Einziger and Sein which may literally be translated as The Unique Individual and His Property was published, which is considered to be a founding text in the tradition of individualist anarchism. Stirner does not recommend that the individual try to eliminate the state, but simply that they disregard the state when it conflicts with one's autonomous choices and go along with it when doing so is conducive to one's interests. He says that the egoist rejects pursuit of devotion to a great idea, a good cause, a doctrine, a system, a lofty calling. Saying that the egoist has no political calling, but rather lives themselves out, without regard to how well or ill humanity may fare thereby. Stirner held that the only limitation on the rights of the individual is that individual's power to obtain what he desires. He proposes that most commonly accepted social institutions, including the notion of state, property as a right, natural rights in general, and the very notion of society—were mere spooks in the mind. Stirner wants to "...abolish not only the state but also society as an institution responsible for its members." Stirner advocated self-assertion and foresaw union of egoists, non-systematic associations, which Stirner proposed in as a form of organization in place of the state. A union is understood as a relation between egoists which is continually renewed by all parties' support through an act of will. Even murder is permissible, if it is right for me. Though it is claimed by egoist anarchists that egoism will foster genuine and spontaneous union between individuals. For Stirner, property simply comes about through might. Whoever knows how to take, to defend, the thing, to him belongs property. He further says, What I have in my power, that is my own. So long as I assert myself as holder, I am the proprietor of the thing. And that, I do not step shyly back from your property, but look upon it always as my property, in which I respect nothing. Pray do the like with what you call my property. His concept of egoistic property not only a lack of moral restraint on how one obtains and uses things, but includes other people as well. His embrace of egoism is in stark contrast to Godwin's altruism. Stirner was opposed to communism, seeing it as a form of authority over the individual. This position on property is much different from the Native American, natural law, form of individualist anarchism, which defends the inviolability of the private property that has been earned through labor and trade. However, Benjamin Tucker rejected the natural rights philosophy and adopted Stirner's egoism in 1886, with several others joining with him. This split the American individualists into fierce debate, with the natural rights proponents accusing the egoists of destroying libertarianism itself. Other egoists include James L. Walker, Sidney Parker, Dora Marsden and John Beverly Robinson. 
In Russia, individualist anarchism inspired by Stirner combined with an appreciation for Friedrich Nietzsche attracted a small following of bohemian artists and intellectuals such as Lev Chernyi, as well as a few lone wolves who found self-expression in crime and violence. They rejected organizing, believing that only unorganized individuals were safe from coercion and domination, believing this kept them true to the ideals of anarchism. This type of individualist anarchism inspired anarcha feminist Emma Goldman. Though Stirner's philosophy is individualist, it has influenced some libertarian communists and anarcho communists. For Ourselves Council for Generalized Self Management, discusses Stirner and speaks of a communist egoism, which is said to be a synthesis of individualism and collectivism, and says that greed in its fullest sense is the only possible basis of communist society. Forms of libertarian communism such as situationism are influenced by Stirner. Anarcho-communist Emma Goldman was influenced by both Stirner and Peter Kropotkin and blended the philosophies together in her own as shown in books of hers such as Anarchism and other essays. Topic. Early American individualist anarchism Topic. Josiah Warren Josiah Warren is widely regarded as the first American anarchist and the four-page weekly paper he edited during 1833, The Peaceful Revolutionist, was the first anarchist periodical published, an enterprise for which he built his own printing press, cast his own type and made his own printing plates. Warren was a follower of Robert Owen and joined Owen's community at New Harmony, Indiana. Warren termed the phrase, cost the limit of price, with cost, here referring not to monetary price paid but the labor one exerted to produce an item. Therefore, H.E. proposed a system to pay people with certificates indicating how many hours of work they did. They could exchange the notes at local time stores for goods that took the same amount of time to produce." He put his theories to the test by establishing an experimental, "...labor for labor store," called the Cincinnati Time Store where trade was facilitated by notes backed by a promise to perform labor. The store proved successful and operated for three years after which it was closed so that Warren could pursue establishing colonies based on mutualism. These included Utopia and Modern Times. Warren said that Stephen Pearl Andrews' The Science of Society published in 1852 was the most lucid and complete exposition of Warren's own theories. Catalan historian Xavier Diaz report that the intentional communal experiments pioneered by Warren were influential in European individualist anarchists of the late 19th and early 20th centuries such as Emile Armand and the intentional communities started by them. <laughs> Henry David Thoreau Henry David Thoreau (1817–1862) was an important early influence in individualist anarchist thought in the United States and Europe. Thoreau was an American author, poet, naturalist, tax resistor, development critic, surveyor, historian, philosopher, and leading transcendentalist. 
He is best known for his book Walden, a reflection upon simple living in natural surroundings, and his essay, Civil Disobedience, an argument for individual resistance to civil government in moral opposition to an unjust state. His thought is an early influence on green anarchism, but with an emphasis on the individual experience of the natural world influencing later naturist currents, simple living as a rejection of a materialist lifestyle and self-sufficiency were Thoreau's goals and the whole project was inspired by transcendentalist philosophy. Many have seen in Thoreau one of the precursors of ecologism and anarcho-primitivism represented today in John Zerzan. For George Woodcock, this attitude can be also motivated by certain idea of resistance to progress and of rejection of the growing materialism which is the nature of American society in the mid-19th century. The essay Civil Disobedience Resistance to Civil Government was first published in 1849. It argues that people should not permit governments to overrule or atrophy their consciences and that people have a duty to avoid allowing such acquiescence to enable the government to make them the agents of injustice. Thoreau was motivated in part by his disgust with slavery and the Mexican-American War. The essay later influenced Mohandas Gandhi, Martin Luther King Jr., Martin Buber and Leo Tolstoy through its advocacy of nonviolent resistance. It is also the main precedent for anarcho-pacifism. The American version of individualist anarchism has a strong emphasis on the non-aggression principle and individual sovereignty. Some individualist anarchists such as Thoreau do not speak of economics, but simply the right of disunion from the state and foresee the gradual elimination of the state through social evolution. <laughs> Developments and expansion Topic. Free love, anarcha feminism and LGBT issues An important current within individualist anarchism is free love. Free love advocates sometimes trace their roots back to Josiah Warren and to experimental communities, and viewed sexual freedom as a clear, direct expression of an individual's self-ownership. Free love particularly stressed women's rights since most sexual laws, such as those governing marriage and use of birth control, discriminated against women. The most important American free love journal was Lucifer the Lightbearer, 1883-1907, edited by Moses Harmon and Lois Weisbrooker but also there existed Ezra Hayward and Angela Hayward's The Word, 1872-1890, 1892-1893. M. E. Lazarus was also an important American individualist anarchist who promoted free love. John William Lloyd, a collaborator of Benjamin Tucker's Periodical Liberty, published in 1931 a sex manual that he called the Caressa Method, or Magnetation, the Art of Connubial Love. In Europe, the main propagandist of free love within individualist anarchism was Emile Armand. He proposed the concept of la camaraderie amoureuse to speak of free love as the possibility of voluntary sexual encounter between consenting adults. He was also a consistent proponent of polyamory. In France, there was also feminist activity inside individualist anarchism as promoted by individualist feminists Marie Couguet, Anna Mahé, Rorette Maitrejon and Sofia Zykovska. The Brazilian individualist anarchist Maria Lacerda de Maura lectured on topics such as education, women's rights, free love and anti-militarism. 
Her writings and essays garnered her attention not only in Brazil, but also in Argentina and Uruguay. She also wrote for the Spanish individualist anarchist magazine Al Margen alongside Miguel Jiménez Agualada. In Germany, the Sternerists Adolf Brand and John Henry Mackay were pioneering campaigners for the acceptance of male bisexuality and homosexuality. Topic. Free thought Free thought as a philosophical position and as activism was important in both North American and European individualist anarchism, but in the United States free thought was basically an anti-Christian, anti-clerical movement whose purpose was to make the individual politically and spiritually free to decide for himself on religious matters. A number of contributors to liberty were prominent figures in both freethought and anarchism. The individualist anarchist George MacDonald was a co-editor of Freethought and for a time the truth seeker. E.C. Walker was co-editor of Lucifer, the light bearer. Many of the anarchists were ardent freethinkers, reprints from freethought papers such as Lucifer, The Light Bearer, Freethought and The Truth Seeker appeared in Liberty. The Church was viewed as a common ally of the state and as a repressive force in and of itself. In Europe, a similar development occurred in French and Spanish individualist anarchist circles. Anti-clericalism, just as in the rest of the libertarian movement, is another of the frequent elements which will gain relevance related to the measure in which the French Republic begins to have conflicts with the Church. Anti-clerical discourse, frequently called for by the French individualist André Laurelot, will have its impacts in e-studios, a Spanish individualist anarchist publication. There will be an attack on institutionalized religion for the responsibility that it had in the past on negative developments, for its irrationality which makes it a counterpoint of philosophical and scientific progress. There will be a criticism of proselytism and ideological manipulation which happens on both believers and agnostics. This tendencies will continue in French individualist anarchism in the work and activism of Charles Auguste Bontom and others. In the Spanish individualist anarchist magazine Etica and Initials, there is a strong interest in publishing scientific news, usually linked to a certain atheist and anti-theist obsession, philosophy which will also work for pointing out the incompatibility between science and religion, faith and reason. In this way there will be a lot of talk on Darwin's theories or on the negation of the existence of the soul. Anarcho-naturism Another important current, especially within French and Spanish individualist anarchist groups was naturism. Naturism promoted an ecological worldview, small eco-villages and most prominently nudism as a way to avoid the artificiality of the industrial mass society of modernity. Naturist individualist anarchists saw the individual in his biological, physical and psychological aspects and avoided and tried to eliminate social determinations. An early influence in this vein was Henry David Thoreau and his famous book Walden. 
Important promoters of this were Henry Zisley and Émile Gravel who collaborated in La Nouvelle Humanité followed by La Naturien, La Sauvage, L'Ordre Naturel and La Vie Naturelle. This relationship between anarchism and naturism was quite important at the end of the 1920s in Spain, when T. He linking role played by the Sol y Vida group was very important. The goal of this group was to take trips and enjoy the open air. The Naturist Athenaeum, Eclectico, in Barcelona, was the base from which the activities of the group were launched. First Etica and then Initials, which began in 1929, were the publications of the group, which lasted until the Spanish Civil War. We must be aware that the naturist ideas expressed in them match the desires that the libertarian youth had of breaking up with the conventions of the bourgeoisie of the time. That is what a young worker explained in a letter to Initials. He writes it under the odd pseudonym of Silvestre del Campo, wild man in the country. Quote, I find great pleasure in being naked in the woods, bathed in light and air, two natural elements we cannot do without. By shunning the humble garment of an exploited person, garments which, in my opinion, are the result of all the laws devised to make our lives bitter, we feel there are no others left but just the natural laws. Clothes mean slavery for some and tyranny for others. Only the naked man who rebels against all norms, stands for anarchism, devoid of the prejudices of outfit imposed by our money-oriented society. Quote dot. The relation between anarchism and naturism gives way to the Naturist Federation, in July 1928, and to the LV Spanish Naturist Congress, in September 1929, both supported by the libertarian movement. However, in the short term, the naturist and libertarian movements grew apart in the conceptions of everyday life. The naturist movement felt closer to the libertarian individualism of some French theoreticians such as Henry N.E.R. real name of Han Rinner than to the revolutionary goals proposed by some anarchist organizations such as the FI, Federación Anarquista Ibérica. Topic Individualist anarchism and Friedrich Nietzsche The thought of German philosopher Friedrich Nietzsche has been influential in individualist anarchism, specifically in thinkers such as Francis Emil Armand, the Italian Renzo Novatore and the Colombian Biophilo Panclaster. Robert C. Holub, author of Nietzsche, Socialist, Anarchist, Feminist posits that, "...translations of Nietzsche's writings in the United States very likely appeared first in Liberty, the anarchist journal edited by Benjamin Tucker." <laughs> Anglo-American individualist anarchism Topic American mutualism and individualist utopianism For American anarchist historian Eunice Manette Schuster, I.T. is apparent, that Proudhonian anarchism was to be found in the United States at least as early as 1848 and that it was not conscious of its affinity to the individualist anarchism of Josiah Warren and Stephen Pearl Andrews. William B. Green presented this Proudhonian mutualism in its purest and most systematic form. William Batchelder Green is best known for the works Mutual Banking 1850, which proposed an interest-free banking system, and Transcendentalism, a critique of the New England philosophical school. 
He saw mutualism as the synthesis of liberty and order. His associationism is checked by individualism, mind your own business, judge not that ye be not judged, over matters which are purely personal, as for example, moral conduct, the individual is sovereign, as well as over that which he himself produces. For this reason he demands mutuality, in marriage, the equal right of a woman to her own personal freedom and property and feminist and spiritualist tendencies. Contemporary American anarchist Hakeem Bey reports that Stephen Pearl Andrews was not a Fourierist, see Charles Fourier, but he lived through the brief craze for phalansteries in America and adopted a lot of Fourierist principles and practices. A make of worlds out of words. He syncretized abolitionism, free love, spiritual universalism, Josiah Warren, and Charles Fourier into a grand utopian scheme he called the Universal Pantarchy. He was instrumental in founding several intentional communities, including the Brownstone Utopia on 14th Street in New York, and Modern Times in Brentwood, Long Island. The latter became as famous as the best-known Fourierist communes Brook Farm in Massachusetts and the North American Phalanx in New Jersey. In fact, modern times became downright notorious for free love and finally founded under a wave of scandalous publicity. Andrews and Victoria Woodhull were members of the infamous Section 12 of the First International, expelled by Marx for its anarchist, feminist, and spiritualist tendencies. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Boston Anarchists. Another form of individualist anarchism was found in the United States as advocated by the so-called Boston anarchists. By default, American individualists had no difficulty accepting the concepts that one man employ another, or that he direct him in his labor but rather demanded that all natural opportunities requisite to the production of wealth be accessible to all on equal terms and that monopolies arising from special privileges created by law be abolished. They believed state monopoly capitalism, defined as a state-sponsored monopoly, prevented labor from being fully rewarded. Voltaire Inia de Clare summed up the philosophy by saying that the anarchist individualists affirm in the idea that the system of employer and employed, buying and selling, banking, and all the other essential institutions of commercialism, centered upon private property, are in themselves good, and are rendered vicious merely by the interference of the state. Even among the 19th-century American individualists, there was not a monolithic doctrine as they disagreed amongst each other on various issues including intellectual property rights and possession versus property in land. A major schism occurred later in the 19th century when Tucker and some others abandoned their traditional support of natural rights as espoused by Lysander Spooner and converted to an egoism", modeled upon Max Stirner's philosophy. Lysander Spooner besides his individualist anarchist activism was also an important anti-slavery activist and became a member of the First International. Some Boston anarchists, including Benjamin Tucker, identified themselves as socialists, which in the 19th century was often used in the sense of a commitment to improving conditions of the working class, i.e., the labor problem. The Boston anarchists such as Tucker and his followers continue to be considered socialists due to their opposition to usury. They do so because as the modern economist Jim Stanford points out there are many different kinds of competitive markets such as market socialism and capitalism is only one type of a market economy. 
By around the start of the 20th century, the heyday of individualist anarchism had passed. American individualist anarchism and the labor movement George Woodcock reports that the American individualist anarchists Lysander Spooner and William B. Green had been members of the socialist First International. Two individualist anarchists who wrote in Benjamin Tucker's Liberty were also important labor organizers of the time. Joseph Labadie, April 18, 1850 to October 7, 1933, was an American labor organizer, individualist anarchist, social activist, printer, publisher, essayist and poet. In 1883, Labadie embraced a non-violent version of individualist anarchism. Without the oppression of the state, Labadie believed, humans would choose to harmonize with the great natural laws without robbing their fellows through interest, profit, rent and taxes. However, he supported community cooperation as he supported community control of water utilities, streets and railroads. Although he did not support the militant anarchism of the Haymarket anarchists, he fought for the clemency of the accused because he did not believe they were the perpetrators. In 1888, Labadie organized the Michigan Federation of Labor, became its first president and forged an alliance with Samuel Gompers. A colleague of Labadie's at Liberty, Dyer Lum was another important individualist anarchist labor activist and poet of the era. A leading anarcho-syndicalist and a prominent left-wing intellectual of the 1880s, he is remembered as the lover and mentor of early anarcha feminist Voltairinia de Clare. Lum was a prolific writer who wrote a number of key anarchist texts and contributed to publications including Mother Earth, 20th Century, The Alarm, The Journal of the International Working People's Association, and The Open Court among others. Lum's political philosophy was a fusion of individualist anarchist economics, a radicalized form of laissez-faire economics. Inspired by the Boston anarchists, with radical labor organization similar to that of the Chicago anarchists of the time. Herbert Spencer and Pierre Joseph Proudhon influenced Lum strongly in his individualist tendency. He developed a mutualist theory of unions and as such was active within the Knights of Labor and later promoted anti-political strategies in the American Federation of Labor. Frustration with abolitionism, spiritualism and labor reform caused Lum to embrace anarchism and radicalize workers. Convinced of the necessity of violence to enact social change he volunteered to fight in the American Civil War, hoping thereby to bring about the end of slavery. Kevin Carson has praised Lum's fusion of individualist laissez-faire economics with radical labor activism as creative and described him as more significant than any in the Boston group. Topic: American egoism. Some of the American individualist anarchists later in this era, such as Benjamin Tucker, abandoned natural rights positions and converted to Max Stirner's egoist anarchism. Rejecting the idea of moral rights, Tucker said that there were only two rights: the right of might and the right of contract. He also said after converting to egoist individualism that, I end times past. It was my habit to talk glibly of the right of man to land. 
It was a bad habit, and I long ago sloughed it off. Man's only right to land is his might over it. In adopting Sternerite egoism in 1886, Tucker rejected natural rights which had long been considered the foundation of libertarianism. This rejection galvanized the movement into fierce debates, with the natural rights proponents accusing the egoists of destroying libertarianism itself. So bitter was the conflict that a number of natural rights proponents withdrew from the pages of liberty in protest even though they had hitherto been among its frequent contributors. Thereafter, liberty championed egoism although its general content did not change significantly. Several periodicals were undoubtedly influenced by liberty's presentation of egoism. They included I published by Clarence Lee Swartz, edited by William Wallstein Gordak and J. William Lloyd all associates of liberty, and The Ego and the Egoist, both of which were edited by Edward H. Fulton. Among the egoist papers that Tucker followed were the German Der Eigen, edited by Adolf Brand, and The Eagle and the Serpent, issued from London. The latter, the most prominent English-language egoist journal, was published from 1898 to 1900 with the subtitle, A Journal of Egoistic Philosophy and Sociology. American anarchists who adhered to egoism include Benjamin Tucker, John Beverly Robinson, Stephen T. Byington, Hutchins Hapgood, James L. Walker, Victor Yaros and Edward H. Fulton. Robinson wrote an essay called, Egoism, in which he states that M. O. Dern egoism, as propounded by Stirner and Nietzsche, and expounded by Ibsen, Shaw and others, is all these, but it is more. It is the realization by the individual that they are an individual, that, as far as they are concerned, they are the only individual. Walker published the work The Philosophy of Egoism in which he argued that egoism "...implies a rethinking of the self-other relationship, nothing less than a complete revolution in the relations of mankind that avoids both the archist principle that legitimates domination and the moralist notion that elevates self-renunciation to a virtue. Walker describes himself as an egoistic anarchist, who believed in both contract and cooperation as practical principles to guide everyday interactions. For Walker, what really defines egoism is not mere self-interest, pleasure, or greed, it is the sovereignty of the individual, the full expression of the subjectivity of the individual ego." Italian anti-organizationalist individualist anarchism was brought to the United States by Italian-born individualists such as Giuseppe Ciancabilla and others who advocated for violent propaganda by the deed there. Anarchist historian George Woodcock reports the incident in which the important Italian social anarchist Errico Malatesta became involved. In a dispute with the individualist anarchists of Patterson, who insisted that anarchism implied no organization at all, and that every man must act solely on his impulses. At last, in one noisy debate, the individual impulse of a certain Siancabilla directed him to shoot Malatesta, who was badly wounded but obstinately refused to name his assailant. Enrico Aragoni pseudonym Frank Brand, was an Italian-American individualist anarchist lathe operator, house painter, bricklayer, dramatist and political activist influenced by the work of Max Stirner. 
He took the pseudonym Brand from a fictional character in one of Henrik Ibsen's plays. In the 1910s, he started becoming involved in anarchist and anti-war activism around Milan. From the 1910s until the 1920s, he participated in anarchist activities and popular uprisings in various countries including Switzerland, Germany, Hungary, Argentina and Cuba. He lived from the 1920s onwards in New York City, where he edited the individualist anarchist eclectic journal Eresia in 1928. He also wrote for other American anarchist publications such as El Adonata de Refratari, Cultura Obrera, Controcorrente and Intesa Libertaria. During the Spanish Civil War, he went to fight with the anarchists, but he was imprisoned and was helped on his release by Emma Goldman. Afterwards, Aragoni became a longtime member of the Libertarian Book Club in New York City. His written works include The Totalitarian Nightmare, 1975, The Lunacy of the Superman, 1977, Adventures in the Country of the Monoliths, 1981, and Freedom, My Dream, 1986. Topic: Anarcho-capitalism. Without the labor theory of value, 19th-century individualist anarchists approximate the modern movement of anarcho-capitalism. As economic theory changed, the popularity of the labor theory of classical economics was superseded by the subjective theory of value of neoclassical economics. Murray Rothbard, a student of Ludwig von Mises, combined Mises' Austrian school of economics with the absolutist views of human rights and rejection of the state he had absorbed from studying the individualist American anarchists of the 19th century such as Lysander Spooner and Benjamin Tucker. In the mid-1950s, Rothbard wrote an article under a pseudonym, saying that we are not anarchists, but not archists either. Perhaps, then, we could call ourselves by a new name, nonarchist. Concerned with differentiating himself from communist and socialistic economic views of other anarchists, including the individualist anarchists of the 19th century. There is a strong current within anarchism which does not consider that anarcho-capitalism can be considered a part of the anarchist movement due to the fact that anarchism has historically been an anti-capitalist movement and for definitional reasons which see anarchism incompatible with capitalist forms, though anarcho-capitalism has been regarded by some as a form of individualist anarchism, anarcho-capitalist author Murray Rothbard stated that individualist anarchism is different from capitalism due to the individualist anarchists retaining the labor theory of value and many writers deny that anarcho-capitalism is a form of anarchism at all, or that capitalism itself is compatible with anarchism. <laughs> Agorism Agorism was developed from anarcho-capitalism in the late 20th century by Samuel Edward Konkin III. The goal of agorists is a society in which all relations between people are voluntary exchanges, a free market. Agorists are market anarchists. Most agorists consider that property rights are natural rights deriving from the primary right of self-ownership. Because of this, they are not opposed in principle to collectively held property if individual owners of the property consent to collective ownership by contract or other voluntary mutual agreement. However, agorists are divided on the question of intellectual property rights. Topic. 
Topic: <laughs> Left-wing market anarchism. Left-wing market anarchism, a form of left libertarianism, individualist anarchism and libertarian socialism, is associated with scholars such as Kevin Carson, Roderick T. Long, Charles Johnson, Brad Spangler, Samuel Edward Konkin III, Sheldon Richman, Chris Matthew Shabara and Gary Chartier, who stress the value of radically free markets, termed freed market. To distinguish them from the common conception which these libertarians believe to be riddled with statist and capitalist privileges. Referred to as left wing market anarchists or market oriented left libertarians, proponents of this approach strongly affirm the classical liberal ideas of self ownership and free markets while maintaining that, taken to their logical conclusions, these ideas support anti capitalist, anti corporatist, anti hierarchical, pro labor positions in economics, anti imperialism in foreign policy, and thoroughly liberal or radical views regarding such cultural issues as gender, sexuality and race. The genealogy of contemporary market-oriented left libertarianism, sometimes labeled, left-wing market anarchism, overlaps to a significant degree with that of Steiner Valentine left libertarianism as the roots of that tradition are sketched in the book The Origins of Left Libertarianism. Carson Long style left libertarianism is rooted in 19th century mutualism and in the work of figures such as Thomas Hodgkin and the individualist anarchists Benjamin Tucker and Lysander Spooner. While with notable exceptions market-oriented libertarians after Tucker tended to ally with the political right, relationships between such libertarians and the new left thrived in the 1960s, laying the groundwork for modern left-wing market anarchism. Left-wing market anarchism identifies with left libertarianism, or left-wing libertarianism, which names several related but distinct approaches to politics, society, culture, and political and social theory, which stress both individual freedom and social justice. Unlike right libertarians, they believe that neither claiming nor mixing one's labor with natural resources is enough to generate full private property rights and maintain that natural resources land, oil, gold, trees ought to be held in some egalitarian manner, either unowned or owned collectively. Those left libertarians who support private property do so under the condition that recompense is offered to the local community. Topic post left anarchy and insurrectionary anarchism Murray Bookchin has identified post left anarchy as a form of individualist anarchism in social anarchism or lifestyle anarchism, an unbridgeable chasm where he identifies a shift among Euro American anarchists away from social anarchism and toward individualist or lifestyle anarchism. Indeed, lifestyle anarchism today is finding its principal expression in spray and graffiti, postmodernist nihilism, antirationalism, neo-primitivism, anti-technologism, neo-situationist cultural terrorism, mysticism, and a practice of staging Foucauldian personal insurrections. Post-left anarchist Bob Black in his long critique of Buchan's philosophy called Anarchy after leftism said about post-left anarchy that IT is, unlike Buchanism, individualistic, in the sense that if the freedom and happiness of the individual, i.e., each and every really existing person, every Tom, Dick and Murray, is not the measure of the good society, what is, a strong relationship does exist exist between post-left anarchism and the work of individualist anarchist Max Stirner. 
Jason McQuinn says that, when I and other anti-ideological anarchists criticize ideology, it is always from a specifically critical, anarchist perspective rooted in both the skeptical, individualist anarchist philosophy of Max Stirner. Bob Black and Feral Fawn, Wolfie Landstreicher also strongly adhere to Stirnerist egoist anarchism. Bob Black has humorously suggested the idea of Marxist Stirnerism. Hakim Bey has said, from Stirner's Union of Self Owning Ones, we proceed to Nietzsche's Circle of Free Spirits, and thence to Charles Fourier's Passional Series, doubling and redoubling ourselves even as the other multiplies itself in the eros of the group. Bay also wrote, the Mackay Society, of which Mark and I are active members, is devoted to the anarchism of Max Stirner, Benj. Tucker and John Henry Mackay, the Mackay Society, incidentally, represents a little-known current of individualist thought which never cut its ties with revolutionary labor. Dyer Lum, Ezra and Angela Hayward represent this school of thought. Joe Labadi, who wrote for Tucker's Liberty, made himself a link between the American plum line anarchists, the philosophical individualists, and the syndicalist or communist branch of the movement. His influence reached the Mackay Society through his son, Lawrence. Like the Italian Sternerites, who influenced us through our late friend Enrico Aragoni, we support all anti-authoritarian currents, despite their apparent contradictions. As far as posterior individualist anarchists, Jason McQuinn for some time used the pseudonym Lev Cherny in honor of the Russian individualist anarchist of the same name, while Feral Fawn has quoted Italian individualist anarchist Ren. Enzo Novator and has translated both Novator and the young Italian individualist anarchist Bruno Filippi. Egoism has had a strong influence on insurrectionary anarchism, as can be seen in the work of Wolfie Landstreicher. Feral Fawn wrote in 1995, in the game of insurgents, a lived guerrilla war game, it is strategically necessary to use identities and roles. Unfortunately, the context of social relationships gives these roles and identities the power to define the individual who attempts to use them. Sarai, Feral Fawn, became, an anarchist, a writer, a sterner influence, post-situationist, anti-civilization theorist, if not in my own eyes, at least in the eyes of most people who've read my writings. Topic. European individualist anarchism European individualist anarchism proceeded from the roots laid by William Godwin, Pierre-Joseph Proudhon and Max Stirner. Proudhon was an early pioneer of anarchism as well as of the important individualist anarchist current of mutualism. Stirner became a central figure of individualist anarchism through the publication of his seminal work The Ego and Its Own which is considered to be a founding text in the tradition of individualist anarchism. Another early figure was Anselm Belligarig. Individualist anarchism expanded and diversified through Europe, incorporating influences from North American individualist anarchism. European individualist anarchists include Albert Libertad, Belly Garrig, Oscar Wilde, Emil Armand, Lev Cherny, John Henry Mackay, Han Rinner, Adolf Brand, Miguel Jiménez Agualada, Renzo Novator and currently Michel Onfray. Important currents within it include free love, anarcho-naturism and illegalism. Topic. France 
From the legacy of Proudhon and Stirner there emerged a strong tradition of French individualist anarchism. An early important individualist anarchist was Anselm Belligarig. He participated in the French Revolution of 1848, was author and editor of Anarchy, Journal de l'Ordre and Au Fait. Au Fait. Interpretation de la Dé Démocratique and wrote the important early anarchist manifesto in 1850. Catalan historian of individualist anarchism Xavier Diaz reports that during his travels in the United States, he at least contacted Henry David Thoreau and probably Josiah Warren. Autonomy Individuelle was an individualist anarchist publication that ran from 1887 to 1888. It was edited by Jean-Baptiste Louis, Charles Schaeffer and Georges Dihiamé. Later, this tradition continued with such intellectuals as Albert Libertad, André Laurelo, Émile Armand, Victor Serge, Zoe Daxa and Rarette Maitrejon, who in 1905 developed theory in the main individualist anarchist journal in France, L'Anarchy. Outside this journal, Han Rinner wrote Petit Manuel Individualista 1903. In 1891, Zodaxa created the journal Len Dehors. Anarcho-naturism was promoted by Henry Zisley, Emile Gravel and Georges Butteau. Butteau was an individualist. Partisan of the Melia Libres, publisher of Flambeau. Quote opening parenthesis quote. An enemy of authority. In 1901 in Vienna. And most of his energies were devoted to creating anarchist colonies communautés experimentales in which he participated in several, in this sense. The theoretical positions and the vital experiences of F. Wrench individualism are deeply iconoclastic and scandalous, even within libertarian circles. The call of nudist naturism, the strong defense of Bith control methods, the idea of unions of egoists with the sole justification of sexual practices, that will try to put in practice, not without difficulties, will establish a way of thought and action, and will result in sympathy within some, and a strong rejection within others." French individualist anarchists grouped behind Émile Armand, published L'Anique after World War II. L'Anique went from 1945 to 1956 with a total of 110 numbers. Gérard de la Caisse d'Uthiers was a French writer, art critic, pacifist and anarchist. Lacaze Duthiers, an art critic for the symbolist review journal Le Plume, was influenced by Oscar Wilde, Friedrich Nietzsche and Max Stirner. His 1906 L'Ideal Humaine de la helped found the «artistocracy movement», a movement advocating life in the service of art. His ideal was an anti-elitist aestheticism. All men should be artists. Together with Andre Colima and Manuel de Valdez, in 1913 he founded L'Action Da, an anarchist literary journal. After World War II, he contributed to the journal L'Anique. Within the synthesis anarchist organization, the Fédération Anarchiste, there existed an individualist anarchist tendency alongside anarcho-communist and anarcho-syndicalist currents. Individualist anarchists participating inside the Fédération Anarchiste included Charles Auguste Bontom, Georges Vinci and André Aru. 
The new base principles of the Francophone Anarchist Federation were written by the individualist anarchist Charles Auguste Bontom and the anarcho communist Maurice Joyer, which established an organization with a plurality of tendencies and autonomy of federated groups organized around synthesis principles. Charles Auguste Bontom was a prolific author mainly in the anarchist, free-thinking, pacifist and naturist press of the time. His view on anarchism was based around his concept of «social individualism», on which he wrote extensively. He defended an anarchist perspective which consisted on «a collectivism of things and an individualism of persons». In 2002, Libertad organized a new version of the Lendhors, collaborating with Green Anarchy and including several contributors, such as Lawrence Jarrick, Patrick Mignard, Thierry Laudet, Ron Sakolsky and Thomas Slutt. Numerous articles about capitalism, human rights, free love and social fights were published. The Endhors continues now as a website, endhors.org. The prolific contemporary French philosopher Michel Onfray has been writing from an individualist anarchist perspective influenced by Nietzsche. French post structuralists thinkers such as Michel Foucault and Gilles Deleuze, and Greek classical schools of philosophy such as the Cynics and Cyrenaics. Among the books which best expose on Frey's individualist anarchist perspective include La Sculpture de Soi, La Morale Esthétique, The Sculpture of Oneself, Aesthetic Morality, La Philosophie Ferris, Exercises Anarchistes, La Puissance d'Exister and Physiologie de Georges Palante, Portrait d'un Nichain de Gauche, which focuses on French individualist philosopher Georges Palante. Topic. Illegalism Illegalism is an anarchist philosophy that developed primarily in France, Italy, Belgium and Switzerland during the early 1900s as an outgrowth of Stirner's individualist anarchism. Illegalists usually did not seek moral basis for their actions, recognizing only the reality of might rather than right. And for the most part, illegal acts were done simply to satisfy personal desires, not for some greater ideal, although some committed crimes as a form of propaganda of the deed. The illegalists embraced direct action and propaganda of the deed, influenced by theorist Max Stirner's egoism as well as Pierre Joseph Proudhon, his view that Property is theft. Clément Duval and Marius Jacob proposed the theory of la reprise individuelle, individual reclamation, which justified robbery on the rich and personal direct action against exploiters and the system. Illegalism first rose to prominence among a generation of Europeans inspired by the unrest of the 1890s, during which Ravachol, Emil Henry, Auguste Valent, and Sante Geronimo Casario committed daring crimes in the name of anarchism in what is known as propaganda of the deed. France's Bonnot Gang was the most famous group to embrace illegalism. <inaudible> Italy In Italy, individualist anarchism had a strong tendency towards illegalism and violent propaganda by the deed similar to French individualist anarchism, but perhaps more extreme and which emphasized criticism of organization be it anarchist or of other type. 
In this respect, we can consider notorious magnicides carried out or attempted by individualists Giovanni Passanante, Sonte Casario, Michel Angiolio, Luigi Luceni and Gaetano Bresci who murdered King Umberto I. Casario lived in France and coexisted within French illegalism and later assassinated French President Sadi Carnot. The theoretical seeds of current insurrectionary anarchism were already laid out at the end of 19th century Italy in a combination of individualist anarchism criticism of permanent groups and organization with a socialist class struggle worldview. During the rise of fascism, this thought also motivated Gino Lucetti, Michel Chirou and Angelo Sabardolotto in attempting the assassination of Benito Mussolini. During the early 20th century, the intellectual work of individualist anarchist Renzo Novatore came to importance and he was influenced by Max Stirner, Friedrich Nietzsche, Georges Palante, Oscar Wilde, Henrik Ibsen, Arthur Schopenhauer and Charles Baudelaire. He collaborated in numerous anarchist journals and participated in futurism avant-garde currents. In his thought, he adhered to sternerist disrespect for private property, only recognizing property of one's own spirit. Novator collaborated in the individualist anarchist journal Iconoclaster, alongside the young sternerist illegalist Bruno Philippi. The individualist philosopher and poet Renzo Novator belonged to the leftist section of the avant garde movement of futurism alongside other individualist anarcho futurists such as Dante Carnsecchi, Lida Raffinelli, Oro D'Arcola, and Giovanni Governato. There was also Pietro Bruzzi who published the journal L'Individualista in the 1920s alongside Ugo Fedeli and Francesco Ghezzi, but who fell to fascist forces later. Bruzzi also collaborated with the Italian-American individualist anarchist publication Eresia of New York City edited by Enrico Aragoni. In 1945 in Italy during the founding congress of the Italian Anarchist Federation, there was a group of individualist anarchists led by Cesare Zaccaria who was an important anarchist of the time. Later during the IX Congress of the Italian Anarchist Federation in Carrara in 1965, a group decided to split off from this organization and created the Gruppi di Iniziativa Anarchica. In the 1970s, it was mostly composed of veteran individualist anarchists with an of pacifism orientation, naturism. In the famous Italian insurrectionary anarchist essay written by an anonymous writer, at daggers drawn with the existent, its defenders and its false critics, there reads, the workers who, during a wildcat strike, carried a banner saying, we are not asking for anything, understood that the defeat is in the claim itself, the claim against the enemy is eternal. There is no alternative but to take everything. As Stirner said, no matter how much you give them, they will always ask for more, because what they want is no less than the end of every concession. The contemporary imprisoned Italian insurrectionary anarchist philosopher Michel Fabiani writes from an explicit individualist anarchist perspective in such essays as Critica Individualista Anarchica alla Modernita. Individualist Anarchist Critique of Modernity. Horst Fantazzini, March 4, 1939 to December 24, 2001, was an Italian-German individualist anarchist who pursued an illegalist lifestyle and practice until his death in 2001. He gained media notoriety mainly due to his many bank robberies through Italy and other countries. 
In 1999, the film Ormai Fata appeared based on his life. Topic: <laughs> Spain. While Spain was influenced by American individualist anarchism, it was more closely related to the French currents. Around the start of the 20th century, individualism in Spain gathered force through the efforts of people such as Dorado Montero, Ricardo Mella, Federico Urales, Miguel Jiménez Agualada, Mariano Gallardo and J. Elizalde who translated French and American individualists. Important in this respect were also magazines such as La Idea Libre, La Revista Blanca, Etica, Initials, Almagen, Estudios and Nosotros. The most influential thinkers there were Max Stirner, Emile Armand and Han Rinner. Just as in France, the spread of Esperanto and a nationalism had importance just as naturism and free love currents. Later, Armand and Rinner themselves started writing in the Spanish individualist press. Armand's concept of amorous camaraderie had an important role in motivating polyamory as realization of the individual. Catalan historian Xavier Diaz reports that the Spanish individualist anarchist press was widely read by members of anarcho communist groups and by members of the anarcho syndicalist trade union CNT. There were also the cases of prominent individualist anarchists such as Federico Urales and Miguel Jiménez Agualada who were members of the CNT and J. Elizalde who was a founding member and first secretary of the Iberian Anarchist Federation IAF. Spanish individualist anarchist Miguel Jiménez Agualada wrote the lengthy theory book called Anarchism espousing his individualist anarchism. Between October 1937 and February 1938, he was editor of the individualist anarchist magazine Nosotros in which many works of Armand and Rinner appeared. He also participated in the publishing of another individualist anarchist Maganize Al Margan, Publicación Quincenal Individualista. In his youth, he engaged in illegalist activities. His thought was deeply influenced by Max Stirner, of which he was the main popularizer in Spain through his own writings. He published and wrote the preface to the fourth edition in Spanish of the Ego and its own from 1900. He proposed the creation of a union of egoists. To be a federation of individualist anarchists in Spain, but it did not succeed. In 1956, he published an extensive treatise on Stirner, dedicated to fellow individualist anarchist Emile Armand. Afterwards, he traveled and lived in Argentina, Uruguay, and Mexico. Federico Urales was an important individualist anarchist who edited La Revista Blanca. The individualist anarchism of Urales was influenced by Auguste Comte and Charles Darwin. He saw science and reason as a defense against blind servitude to authority. He was critical of influential individualist thinkers such as Nietzsche and Stirner for promoting an asocial egoist individualism and instead promoted an individualism with solidarity seen as a way to guarantee social equality and harmony. He was highly critical of anarcho-syndicalism, which he viewed as plagued by excessive bureaucracy, and he thought that it tended towards reformism. Instead, he favored small groups based on ideological alignment. He supported and participated in the establishment of the IAF in 1927. In 1956, Miguel Jiménez Agualada on exile escaping from Franco's dictatorship published an extensive treatise on Stirner, which he dedicated to fellow individualist anarchist Emile Armand. 
On the subject of individualist anarchist theory, he published Anarchism in 1968 during his exile in Mexico from Franco's dictatorship in Spain. He was present in the first Congress of the Mexican Anarchist Federation in 1945. In 2000, Ateneo Libertario Ricardo Mella, Ateneo Libertario al Margen, Ateneo Encyclopédic Popular, Ateneo Libertario de Sant Boy, and Ateneo Libertari Pobel Sec y Fundacio d'Estudis Libertaris i Anarcho Syndicalists republished Emile Armand's writings on free love and individualist anarchism in a compilation titled Individualist Anarchism and Amorous Camaraderie. Recently, Spanish historian Xavier Diaz has dedicated extensive research on Spanish individualist anarchism as can be seen in his book El anarquismo individualista en España, 1923–1938 and Utopia sexual a la premsa anarquista de Catalunya. La Revista Etica Initials which deals with free love thought as present in the Spanish individualist anarchist magazine Initials. <laughs> Germany In Germany, the Scottish German John Henry Mackay became the most important propagandist for individualist anarchist ideas. He fused sternerist egoism with the positions of Benjamin Tucker and actually translated Tucker into German. Two semi fictional writings of his own, Die Anarchisten and Der Freiheitsucher, contributed to individualist theory through an updating of egoist themes within a consideration of the anarchist movement. English translations of these works arrived in the United Kingdom and in individualist American circles led by Tucker. Mackay is also known as an important European early activist for gay rights. Using the pseudonym Sagitta, Mackay wrote a series of works for pederastic emancipation, titled Die Bücher der Namenlosen Liebe Books of the Nameless Love. This series was conceived in 1905 and completed in 1913 and included the Fenny Scala, a story of a pederast. Under the same pseudonym, he also published fiction, such as Holland 1924 and a pederastic novel of the Berlin boy bars, Der Puppenjunge The Hustler 1926. Adolf Brand (1874–1945) was a German writer, sternerist anarchist, and pioneering campaigner for the acceptance of male bisexuality and homosexuality. In 1896, Brand published a German homosexual periodical, Der Eigen. This was the first ongoing homosexual publication in the world. The name was taken from writings of egoist philosopher Max Stirner, who had greatly influenced the young brand and refers to Stirner's concept of self-ownership of the individual. Der Eigen concentrated on cultural and scholarly material and may have had an average of around 1,500 subscribers per issue during its lifetime, although the exact numbers are uncertain. Contributors included Eric Musum, Kurt Hiller, John Henry Mackay under the pseudonym Sagitta and artists Wilhelm von Gloden, Fidus and Sascha Schneider. Brand contributed many poems and articles himself. Benjamin Tucker followed this journal from the United States. Der Einziger was a German individualist anarchist magazine. It appeared in 1919 as a weekly, then sporadically until 1925 and was edited by Cousins Anselm Ruist pseudonym for Ernst Samuel and Meinona pseudonym for Salomo Friedländer. 
Its title was adopted from the book Der Einzige und Sein Eigentum The Ego and Its Own by Max Stirner. Another influence was the thought of German philosopher Friedrich Nietzsche. The publication was connected to the local expressionist artistic current and the transition from it towards Dada. <laughs> United Kingdom and Ireland The English Enlightenment political theorist William Godwin was an important influence as mentioned before. The Irish anarchist writer of the decadent movement Oscar Wilde influenced individualist anarchists such as Renzo Novatore and gained the admiration of Benjamin Tucker. In his important essay The Soul of Man Under Socialism from 1891, Wilde defended socialism as the way to guarantee individualism and so he saw that W I T H the abolition of private property, then, we shall have true, beautiful, healthy individualism. Nobody will waste his life in accumulating things, and the symbols for things. One will live. To live is the rarest thing in the world. Most people exist, that is all. For anarchist historian George Woodcock, Wilde's aim in the soul of man under socialism is to seek the society most favorable to the artist. For wild art is the supreme end, containing within itself enlightenment and regeneration, to which all else in society must be subordinated. Wilde represents the anarchist as aesthete. Woodcock finds that t he most ambitious contribution to literary anarchism during the 1890s was undoubtedly Oscar Wilde the soul of man under socialism and finds that it is influenced mainly by the thought of William Godwin. In the late 19th century in the United Kingdom, there existed individualist anarchists such as Wordsworth Donis Thorpe, Joseph Hyam Levy, Joseph Greaves Fisher, John Badcock Jr., Albert Tarn, and Henry Albert Seymour, who were close to the United States group around Benjamin Tucker's magazine Liberty. In the mid-1880s, Seymour published a journal called The Anarchist and also later took a special interest in free love as he participated in the journal The Adult, a journal for the advancement of freedom in sexual relationships. The Serpent, issued from London, was the most prominent English-language egoist journal and published from 1898 to 1900 with the subtitle a journal of egoistic philosophy and sociology. Henry Moulin was another British anarchist who was notable for his support of free banking. In the United Kingdom, Herbert Reed was influenced highly by egoism as he later approached existentialism, see existentialist anarchism. Albert Camus devoted a section of the rebel to Stirner. Although throughout his book Camus is concerned to present the rebel as a preferred alternative to the revolutionary, he nowhere acknowledges that this distinction is taken from the one that Stirner makes between the revolutionary and the insurrectionist. Sidney Parker is a British egoist individualist anarchist who wrote articles and edited anarchist journals from 1963 to 1993 such as Minus One, Egoist, and Ego. Donald Ruum is an English anarchist cartoonist and writer with a long association with Freedom Press. Ruum stated that for his thought, T. He most influential source is Max Stirner. 
I am happy to be called a Sternerite anarchist, provided Sternerite means one who agrees with Stirner's general drift, not one who agrees with Stirner's every word. An anarchist FAQ reports, "...from meeting anarchists in Glasgow during the Second World War, longtime anarchist activist and artist Donald Room likewise combined Stirner and anarcho-communism." In the hybrid of post-structuralism and anarchism called post-anarchism, Saul Newman has written a lot on Stirner and his similarities to post-structuralism. He writes, Max Stirner's impact on contemporary political theory is often neglected. However in Stirner's political thinking there can be found a surprising convergence with post-structuralist theory, particularly with regard to the function of power. Andrew Koch, for instance, sees Stirner as a thinker who transcends the Hegelian tradition he is usually placed in, arguing that his work is a precursor post-structuralist ideas about the foundations of knowledge and truth. Newman has published several essays on Stirner, War on the State, Stirner and Deleuze's Anarchism, and Empiricism, Pluralism, and Politics in Deleuze and Stirner, discusses what he sees as similarities between Stirner's thought and that of Gilles Deleuze. In Spectres of Stirner, a contemporary critique of ideology. He discusses the conception of ideology in Stirner. In Stirner and Foucault, toward a post-Kantian freedom. Similarities between Stirner and Michel Foucault. He also wrote Politics of the Ego, Stirner's Critique of Liberalism. Topic: <laughs> Russia Individualist anarchism was one of the three categories of anarchism in Russia, along with the more prominent anarcho-communism and anarcho-syndicalism. The ranks of the Russian individualist anarchists were predominantly drawn from the intelligentsia and the working class. For anarchist historian Paul Average T. He two leading exponents of individualist anarchism, both based in Moscow, were Alexei Alexeyevich Borovoy and Lev Chernyi Pavel Dmitrievich Turkaninov. From Nietzsche, they inherited the desire for a complete overturn of all values accepted by bourgeois society political, moral, and cultural. Furthermore, strongly influenced by Max Stirner and Benjamin Tucker, the German and American theorists of individualist anarchism, they demanded the total liberation of the human personality from the fetters of organized society. Some Russian individualists anarchists found the ultimate expression of their social alienation in violence and crime, others attached themselves to avant-garde literary and artistic circles, but the majority remained philosophical. Anarchists who conducted animated parlor discussions and elaborated their individualist theories in ponderous journals and books. Lev Chernyi was an important individualist anarchist involved in resistance against the rise to power of the Bolshevik Party as he adhered mainly to Stirner and the ideas of Tucker. In 1907, he published a book entitled Associational Anarchism, in which he advocated the free association of independent individuals. On his return from Siberia in 1917, he enjoyed great popularity among Moscow workers as a lecturer. Chernyi was also secretary of the Moscow Federation of Anarchist Groups, which was formed in March 1917. He was an advocate. 
for the seizure of private homes, which was an activity seen by the anarchists after the October Revolution as direct expropriation on the Bourgeois. He died after being accused of participation in an episode in which this group bombed the headquarters of the Moscow Committee of the Communist Party. Although most likely not being really involved in the bombing, he might have died of torture. Chernyi advocated a Nietzschean overthrow of the values of bourgeois Russian society, and rejected the voluntary communes of anarcho communist Peter Kropotkin as a threat to the freedom of the individual. Scholars including Avrich and Alan Antliff have interpreted this vision of society to have been greatly influenced by the individualist anarchists Max Stirner and Benjamin Tucker. Subsequent to the book's publication, Chernyi was imprisoned in Siberia under the Russian Tsarist regime for his revolutionary activities. On the other hand, Alexei Borovoy (1876–1936) was a professor of philosophy at Moscow University. A gifted orator and the author of numerous books, pamphlets, and articles which attempted to reconcile individualist anarchism with the doctrines of syndicalism. He wrote, among other theoretical works, Anarchism in 1918, just after the October Revolution, and Anarchism and Law. For him, the chief importance is given not to anarchism as the aim but to anarchy as the continuous quest for the aim." He manifests there that N o social ideal, from the point of view of anarchism, could be referred to as absolute in a sense that supposes it's the crown of human wisdom, the end of social and ethical quest of man. Topic: Latin American individualist anarchism. Argentine anarchist historian Angel Capaletti reports that in Argentina, among the workers that came from Europe in the two first decades of the century, there was curiously some Sternarian individualists influenced by the philosophy of Nietzsche, that saw syndicalism as a potential enemy of anarchist ideology. They established Affinity groups that in 1912 came to, according to Max Netelau, to the number of 20. In 1911 there appeared, in Colon, the periodical El Unico, that defined itself as publicación individualista. Vicente Rojas Lizcano, whose pseudonym was Biofilo Panclaster, was a Colombian individualist anarchist writer and activist. In 1904, he began using the name Biofilo Panclaster. Biofilo in Spanish stands for lover of life and Panclaster for enemy of all. He visited more than 50 countries propagandizing for anarchism which in his case was highly influenced by the thought of Stirner and Nieha. Among his written works there are Siete Anos Enterado Vivo en Una de las Mazmoras de Gomezuela, Horripilante Relato de un Resurtado, 1932, and Mis Prisiones, Mis Destieros y Mi Vida, 1929, which talk about his many adventures while living his life as an adventurer, activist and vagabond as well as his thought and the many times he was a imprisoned in different countries. Maria Lacerda de Maura was a Brazilian teacher, journalist, anarcha-feminist and individualist anarchist. Her ideas regarding education were largely influenced by Francisco Ferrer. She later moved to São Paulo and became involved in journalism for the anarchist and labor press. 
There she also lectured on topics including education, women's rights, free love and anti-militarism. Her writings and essays garnered her attention not only in Brazil, but also in Argentina and Uruguay. In February 1923, she launched Renaissance, a periodical linked with the anarchist, progressive and free-thinking circles of the period. Her thought was mainly influenced by individualist anarchists such as Han Rinner and Emile Armand. She maintained contact with Spanish individualist anarchist circles. Horst Matai Kell was a Spanish language German anarchist philosopher influenced by Max Stirner. In 1938, at the beginning of the German economic crisis and the rise of Nazism and fascism in Europe, Kell moved to Mexico. Kell earned his undergraduate degree, master's and doctorate in philosophy at the National Autonomous University of Mexico, where he returned as a professor of philosophy in the 1980s. He argued that since the individual gives form to the world, he is those objects, the others and the whole universe. One of his main views was a theory of infinite worlds which for him was developed by pre-Socratic philosophers during the 1990s in Argentina there appeared a sternerist publication called El Unico Publicación Periódica de Pensamiento Individualista Topic <laughs> Criticisms <laughs> Philosopher Murray Bookchin criticized individualist anarchism for its opposition to democracy and its embrace of lifestyleism at the expense of class struggle. Bookchin claimed that individualist anarchism supports only negative liberty and rejects the idea of positive liberty. Philosopher Albert Meltzer proposed that individualist anarchism differs radically from revolutionary anarchism and that it is sometimes too readily conceded that this is, after all, anarchism. He claimed that Benjamin Tucker's acceptance of the use of a private police force including to break up violent strikes to protect the employer's freedom is contradictory to the definition of anarchism as no government. Philosopher George Bernard Shaw initially had flirtations with individualist anarchism before coming to the conclusion that it was the negation of socialism, and is, in fact, unsocialism carried as near to its logical conclusion as any sane man dare carry it. Shaw's argument was that even if wealth was initially distributed equally, the degree of laissez-faire advocated by Tucker would result in the distribution of wealth becoming unequal because it would permit private appropriation and accumulation. According to academic Carlotta Anderson, American individualist anarchists accept that free competition results in unequal wealth distribution, but they do not see that as an injustice." Tucker explained, "...if I go through life free and rich, I shall not cry because my neighbor, equally free, is richer. Liberty will ultimately make all men rich, it will not make all men equally rich." Authority may and may not make all men equally rich in purse, it certainly will make them equally poor in all that makes life best worth living. <laughs> Footnotes Alpha carrot the term individualist anarchism is often used as a classificatory term, but in very different ways. Some sources, such as an anarchist FAQ, use the classification social anarchism, individualist anarchism. 
Some see individualist anarchism as distinctly non-socialist and use the classification socialist anarchism, individualist anarchism. Accordingly, other classifications include mutualist, communal. Anarchism, Beta Carrot Michael Frieden identifies four broad types of individualist anarchism. He says the first is the type associated with William Godwin that advocates self-government with a progressive rationalism that included benevolence to others. The second type is the amoral self-serving rationality of egoism as most associated with Max Stirner. The third type is found in Herbert Spencer's early predictions, and in that of some of his disciples such as Donisthorpe, foreseeing the redundancy of the state in the source of social evolution. The fourth type retains a moderated form of egoism and accounts for social cooperation through the advocacy of market relationships. Gamma Carrot C, for example, the winter 2006 issue of the Journal of Libertarian Studies dedicated to reviews of Kevin Carson's studies in mutualist political economy. Mutualists compose one bloc, along with agorists and geo-libertarians, in the recently formed alliance of the libertarian left Delta Carrot though this term is non-standard usage. By left. Agorists mean left. In the general sense used by left libertarians as defined by Roderick T. Long, i.e. as an integration, or I'd argue, a reintegration of libertarianism with concerns that are traditionally thought of as being concerns of the left. That includes concerns for worker empowerment, worry about plutocracy, concerns about feminism and various kinds of social equality. Epsilon Carrot Konkin wrote the article copy wrongs. In opposition to the concept and Shulman countered Sek3's arguments in informational property, logorites. Zeta Carat individualist anarchism is also known by the terms anarchist individualism, anarcho-individualism, individualistic anarchism, libertarian anarchism, Anarcho-libertarianism, anarchist libertarianism, and anarchistic libertarianism. <laughs> 